Mr. Abbott here, and it's time for a boring diagram explanation. This one is number 34, and it is on density. So when you look at this, both of these groups came from Regents' questions. Um, first thing that we should go over is the definition for density. So if you wanted to define density in words, what density really describes is the concentration of matter. It's telling you how much stuff you have packed into what amount of space. Probably the easiest way to dis define it, though, is mathematically. If you look at the front page of your science reference tables, the formula for density is there. Density, you calculate it by taking the mass and dividing by the volume. Mass, you should know, is the amount of matter. It's going to be measured in grams. It's how much stuff you have. Volume is going to be the amount of space. Now, when you're looking at the amount of space, the two units that we might use are cubic centimeters or milliliters if it is a liquid volume. Um, you know, one thing you should definitely know is if you have the same uniform material, and they like that word uniform, the same uniform material will have the same density. Another thing that you definitely should know that they ask about is when you cut an object in pieces, the density stays the same. If you cut an object, you're not forcing the molecules closer together or farther apart. Now, some of you probably have seen that there are actually three formulas that you can use to calculate density. Um, one little trick or mnemonic or device that you could use is called the DMV triangle. You have to make sure the M goes on top, so mountains over valleys, so it's DMV. You cover up the quantity you're looking for. So when I cover up the D, I get D is equal to M over V. They're on top and the bottom. When I cover up the M, mass is equal to density times volume. And if I cover up the V, volume is a mass over density. You could always use algebra to do that, but sometimes it's easier just to have a formula you can plug straight in. Now, looking at this, you also, they're expecting you to know that if you have a regular, you know, rectangular prism, that the formula is volume is equal to length times width times height. So in this diagram, they gave you the density, they gave you the dimensions, obviously they want you to calculate the mass. So why don't we go through this? The volume is 2 centimeters times 2 centimeters times 3 centimeters. Okay, 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12. So when I do this, the volume is 12. Now, centimeters times centimeters times centimeters gives you cubic centimeters, and that unit tells you it's a volume. Now, the formula mass is equal to density times volume. You write the formula. You're substituting with units. So this is 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. We're going to multiply this times our 12 cubic centimeters. When we do this, the cubic centimeters cancel each other out. If I grab my handy dandy little calculator here and I plug in the values 2.7 times 12, and I get 32.4 for the mass of this. 
So that would be 32.4 grams is going to be the mass of this. All right. Now, the other five objects here all came from a group. Okay. If they're giving you the numbers, calculate the densities. I'm not going to write out all of them, but for this one, you know, density is equal to mass over volume. Okay. 8 grams over 4 cubic centimeters, so this one has a density of 2.0 grams per cubic centimeter. Um, density tells you something about flotation. Okay, since this has a density greater than liquid water, which is 1, this would sink in water. Fluid C has a density of 1.2, but block A is more dense than C, fluid C, so not only would this sink in water, it would sink through water. Now, sphere B, they give you the mass, they give you the volume. So I'm not even going to write this one out. I will just plug it into the calculator for you. 9 divided by 5, that's the mass over volume. So this is 1.8 grams per cubic centimeter. Over here, if they give you a cylinder, okay, you have to estimate this seems to be halfway between 50 and 100 so I'd say let's call this 75 milliliters that definitely is the amount of space it's occupying that's going to be your volume so your unknown is your mass mass is equal to density times volume okay your density was given as 1.2 grams per milliliter, carry the equals down, multiplying that by, by our 75 milliliters. Our milliliters cancel the milliliters, and simply I'm going to do 1.2 times 75, and that's going to give me 90 grams as the mass. All right. Two more objects below this. We have object D and object E. They're giving me the mass and the density. Now you'll notice that D has a density of 0.4. That's going to tell you this floats in water because liquid water has a density of 1, and they expect you to know that liquid water has a density of 1. To solve for volume, volume is equal to mass over density. My mass is only 0.8 grams. It's a low mass. But when I'm dividing by 0.4 grams per cubic centimeter, my grams cancels my grams. I wind up a mass a volume in cubic centimeters, which is right. But 0.8 divided by 0.4 is going to give you 2. Finally, I've got block E. Okay. It's a rectangular prism. Volume is equal to length times width times height. Don't forget units. 5 centimeters times 2 centimeters times 3 centimeters. Okay, 5 times 2 is 10 times 3 is 30, so I'm not even going to pl plug this into the calculator, but I do want to remember it's cubic centimeters. I can now stick it into my density formula. Density is equal to mass over the volume. Density is in grams, and it was given as 55.0 grams. My volume is 30 cubic centimeters. Definitely, you want to use your calculator. So 54 divided by 30 is equal to 54 divided by 30 is equal to 1.8 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, looking at these objects, you'll notice that object E and object B, even though they're different shapes, they're different sizes, they have significantly different volumes, okay, this one's six times the volume but it's also six times the mass. So if you're looking at this, when you look at these two, 
what you'll notice is E over here and B over there have the same volume, uh, the same density. So what you might infer is that B and E could be the same material. How do we know that they could be the same material? Because the same material should have the same uniform density. A couple other things we want to discuss quickly. Density and flotation. Okay, if you have a fluid, whether a material floats or sinks depends on the density. If it's going to be more dense, if your object has a higher density, it sinks within the fluid. If it's less dense, it's going to float. And the lower the density, the higher it's going to float. Now, if it has the same density, the same density is going to be suspended. It will just stay, you know, partially submerged within the fluid. Um, you can alter the density by changing a couple of things. So factors that change density. You will be asked what happens when you change the pressure or change the temperature. And it's really important to focus on what's happening to the molecules. If I start with pressure, if I increase the pressure, I squeeze the object, literally that forces the molecules closer together. So as pressure increases, the molecules are forced together, and that's why it's going to become more dense. The more tightly packed the molecules, the higher the density. Now, for most substances, increasing the temperature will have the opposite effect as temperature goes up. As you heat an object, the molecules gain energy, they vibrate faster, they have more kinetic energy, and they actually take up more space, they spread out. So by increasing the temperature, the molecules spread apart. That is going to make the material less dense. Now, there is one huge exception, except for water. You have to know that water is most dense as a liquid. Okay, ice floats in water. So if we're talking about liquid water, you should know that water, the density is equal to one gram per cubic centimeter at 3.98 degrees Celsius. So this is right on the front cover of the reference table where it says properties of water, but water is different. There are factors with the way the atoms are arranged that causes water to behave differently from almost all materials. Now quickly, let's flip to the back. We should have a blank sheet on the back and that is going to let us talk about the, give us a little more space. Okay, what we want to talk about is density and the phase of matter. Okay, they could use the word state of matter, but how does the density change with the states? Well, except for water, we can say for most materials, Okay, if you have a solid, it's going to be tightly packed. So for most substances, the solid is the most dense. When you change it to a liquid, okay, it's going to be slightly less dense. The molecules spread apart when you change it 
from a solid to a liquid. Finally, in a gas, you know the molecules are all over the place. They're really loosely packed. They're bouncing off the walls of the container. So a gas is going to have the lowest density. Of course, we're saying this is except for water. I hope this helps. Take care.